Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of um, 136 to 138 uh, for the 9th and 11th of July. So, uh, sorry for making you panic uh, because I didn't post anything for the past two days because I was overseas, so no choice. And uh, I really cannot find time. Uh, but I did actually update the map. Uh, but just that I didn't have time to do recording. So, so this uh, this video also can uh, this summary also coming up a bit late. Uh, I, it's supposed to be posted around four five hours ago, but I didn't have time because I I was rushing for an appointment. So, uh, yeah. So now we are here. So let's start. Um and um. So let's start off with uh cross border shelling. Uh. Cross border shelling uh, because it's three days, so they're quite a bit, a little bit. So the Russia have uh, bombarded uh, Vilo uh, Dmitrivka, Senkivka, Mikolaivka, and uh, as well as uh, Mikhail China Sloboda. So these are at, in Shenanhiv, and then in uh, Sumy, we have bombardment by the Russians on Bakiv as usual. But this this location must be rather heavily entrenched uh, to attract so much bombardment from the Russians and also uh, Vokivka so as well as uh, Volfine, Volfine so this Volfine and uh, Vokivka is a bit special because they are bomb uh, they are attacked by air, air strikes so not sure is helicopter or is it uh, aircraft uh, I saw one video I suspect is actually a uh, helicopter uh, shelling you know using rocket barrage and also, uh, let's see, have I mentioned this? Lucky, yes. And then also, there's also one more at uh, Myropilia. So these are the bombardment over the border uh, in a re relatively not part of the special military operation part of this uh, Russian-Ukraine border. And the uh, Ukrainians also did uh, fight, back, fight back uh in a little bit. Uh, they used drone strikes the you know where they have the quadcopter, quadcopters uh, dropping mortar or grenades and a uh, drone strike was reported as at uh, Novie Yokovici as well as at uh, Krupets so these are the activities so mostly is really you uh, really attacked by the Russian side it, and uh, it's also interesting to note that we haven't seen uh, artillery or mortar uh, attack from the Ukrainians to attack the Russian side so they are now using drones which might also suggest that they might have already uh, pulled all these equipments over to the to the main battle front so that might be a case so that's why we do we are not seeing any any artillery and perhaps even mortar over this region uh, so over at the southern front so there is a few corrections that uh, I have decided on so I have uh, added uh, something that I usually don't do uh, so this is a one-off the bombardment that is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry so the Russians have bombarded uh, multiple locations that is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry so namely Ukrainka, Posaporovsky, uh, Lyub uh, Lyubomirivka, Pan uh, Partizansky Shoroke, Kobzapsi, and uh, or maybe this Libo Mirivka. So there is actually two of them. So, and what is interesting to note, uh, is the location, or uh, and also at Luzove. So, what is interesting to note is the location of this bombardment, and this bombardment actually indicates where the front line might be. And if you look at the this chain of bombardment, we we can actually see that the chances of these three locations that was uh, previously reported by nl war tracker uh, the pro ukrainian uh, twitter account is likely to be fake or wrong or just invalidated uh, because even even on the uh, riber the pro russian analyst map uh, on their mapping this three location is under russian control and given the kind of bombardment, uh, the location of the bombardment, that suggests that the front line is actually rather far away. And and as such, I'm going to do this uh, invalidation of all this intel uh, from NL, NL War Tracker 
as well as uh, this you know this dispute of the of the capture uh, i will actually adjust them now so this this moving forward towards top uh tomina balka i think this is not true i don't think this had happened um and neither are these captures ever happened this is uh, my assessment however there is a uh, fighting reported at Olesandrivka. accordingly and uh, yet another cursor counter offensive has begun so this is actually rather new i think i just added this like today or just i think it's today yes so uh by clear blue sea um but take this with a massive massive pinch of salt uh because uh, i it's just not sure if this actually is happening because they really like to you know indicate that there is something happening around this Alexandrivka region while there is literally nothing mentioned on the pro-russian uh, side which is rather uh, disturbing and i'm going to move the border all the way uh accordingly to the right bar one so this is the right bar one and uh in the next update i will actually blend the two together the only one that i'm not going to uh adhere to is actually the this Lubo Marivka. There is actually two Lubo Marivka. The one is here and one is here. My gut feeling is that they are unlikely the Russians are unlikely to be bombarded bombarding this location because given that there's actually a lot more Ukrainian positions that they could have bombarded. And I believe that this is actually the part the place that they bombarded. And uh I will gonna leave this uh location here so that uh to indicate that that is actually a disputed uh location uh kept uh location by the ukrainian or the russian side so give me a while let me you know um do this and uh, so because okay uh yeah then i should do this just like that so what happened okay let's say like this okay because i think i just want to you know uh invalidate this part so there is this offensive here at olesandrivka um, there is this report that uh, by War Monitor 3, he's the one of the first to actually report on this, that the Ukrainian forces have captured the town of Kaiserlivka here, which is uh, just uh, southeast of Posad Porovsky. And this is very out of the, you see, the momentum of the war and how the Russians have the front line in this way. To, 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 to say that... Uh, the attack has kept uh, the Ukrainians have captured Kaiserlivka. Will have to suggest that the Ukrainians have also control over Blahodane at least, or but will not uh, or Ternonovi Podi or Lubomarivka. So this is now the other part that I have not cleared up. So this is the other part that we have this parallel universe thing uh, that going on. So while the southern part we have now cleared because now we are trying to clean up all this intelligence. So um it will be a little bit confusing as we go along and so moving forward and you can see that the bombardment here at uh Kobzapsi, Sharoke and uh Patizanske do actually go along with the Raiba report reported uh front line which is uh here where the where they actually put uh, Liu Baini actually under Russian control and uh, all the way to Vas uh, Vasiliki, Masimivka and anything below it is actually all Russian control according to the Raibas map. So uh, this is likely to you know, corroborate uh, Raibas mapping and uh, I believe that uh, it might be uh, interesting or good that I can follow, but I still undecided about this yet. But most likely, this type, this could be true given how the bombardment uh, patterns go. And uh, and another change that or a uh, 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 or you know decision that I've made is that I have decided that Sinehuivka is actually under Russian control, uh, because there is lack of a bombardment on Sinehuivka uh, or reports on anything Sinehuivka not even on the russian side and given that we have this uh geolocation of the russian troops in this filming by uh Izvestia reporter uh this was done by chris one of the top if not the top geolocator on twitter in the osin community 
uh, this geolocation location suggests that Sinihurivka is still under Russian control. And uh, given the lack of activity at Sinihurivka, there is no uh, information of the Ukrainian attacking southward from Sinihurivka. I believe that that entire information that Sinihurivka is captured by the Ukrainians are actually fake or wrong. So that is invalidated as well. So uh, that's the situation now over at the uh, southern France uh, border. In terms of activities, uh, there is a MiG-29 shot down over Mykolaiv. This is actually shot down by Sukhoi-35 of the Russian Air Force. And also we have another uh, Sukhoi-25 shot down uh, by, uh, let me see, by this one is shot down by a MiG-31BM of the Russian uh, Air Force. So. The shot, there is quite a number of shutdown over these few days, which could suggest that there is a, a increased activity on the Ukrainian side, trying to uh, hold back uh, the Russians. And the, and as I mentioned, another Sukhoi 35 shot down over Brezhne Horvate. So this is shot down by uh, Sukhoi 35S of the Russian Air Force. This is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. And um, so in terms of the Lyubomivka, I there is this two. I will probably uh, think that one of these, uh, maybe this one in the south is Ukrainian control. Uh, bombardment, bombarding here might not make a lot of sense. So um, over at the Debedev Bridge front, uh, we have this uh, bombardment reported at Lozove. And this is not the first report about the bombardment at Lozove. It's actually been a few days. And this might suggest that uh, it, is in, it is strongly believed on my side that Luzerve is actually captured by the Ukraine ministry, uh, Ukraine forces, because if not, uh, this doubling, tripling, fourpling down of uh, this bombardment on this position, uh, have to mean something, I guess. So, so, um, I will award this uh, to the Ukrainians um, now. So, the Ukrainian forces uh, captured Luzerve. So, and then I'm going to move back the border for this part. So, the situation over at uh, these two uh, entrenched positions, uh, Bila Krasnitsia and uh, Velikia At Atakove, there's actually no news. Bila Krasnitsia is actually a bit more tricky because there is actually two uh, Bila Krasnitsia just next to each other. Um, they are only like 10, 12 kilometers away from each other. So this creates a huge challenge in terms of uh, verifying what is actually happening here. And uh, tentatively, I have to leave it as is. Uh, as all the bombardments, I tentatively uh, uh, think that they are actually all happening here. They might be happening here, but I'm really not too sure. The fighting at uh, Novo High Horivka, I think this is very outdated already. I don't think this is happening at all so uh otherwise this is actually a rather quiet front other than uh, some this kind of bombardment so if Lozove is under ukrainians uh, these two positions uh, you know might actually be ukrainian as well but we are really not sure there's too little reports about this front here uh over at the cryby ray front um nothing much happened uh this fighting deep there's fighting reported at dobrianza um dobrianka where reconnaissance troops uh, of the Russians were reportedly repelled and destroyed over here. So otherwise, it's rather quiet over at this site. And uh, let's move on to the Zaporizhia line. So Zaporizhia line also, I did this uh, reporting. Uh, I indicated all the reported bombardments uh, based on the Ukraine Defense Ministry operational information. And as per... You can see these bombardments at Kayamske, Mali Shebak, uh, Shishbaiki, Novo Andrivka, Orekhiv, Huyaipo, and uh, Potavka. This actually su suggests that our front line is actually uh, very accurate. The only, and the one that the bombardment reported at Potavka might suggest that this uh, Melanivka. Uh, alleged capture is actually invalidated because there is really no information about Melanivka for a very very long time and uh, given the bombardment is actually at Potavka I believe that Melanivka here 
on the eastern side of Huaipo is should be actually under Russian control. So I actually moved the border accordingly and uh, just indicated this here. Over at Mariupol, uh, there is this um, this is civilian information. The railway line between Mariupol and Vonovaha, which is here, Vonovaha, uh, is now launched. It's the passenger rail service between Mariupol, Mariupol and Vonovaha. So according to the mayor of Mar Mariupol, uh, this is a new mayor, uh, Konstantin Voschenko, Vash, e. Voschenko, sorry. Uh, they say now that there can be a logistic change between uh, the city and the capital of the DPR Donetsk. So it's the means which is not just uh, Mariupol to Vonovaha, but actually they can link from Mariupol to Vonovaha and then link to Donetsk. And this will actually uh, speed up the re rebuilding of Mariupol as well as uh, in terms of resupply because Mariupol there's a port here and uh, resupply and uh, reinforcement can now arrive at Mariupol and then they can take the train up through, through to Vonovaha and then to Donetsk. So this uh, strategically speaking uh, will help in terms of uh, some reinforcement because railway ultimately is still the most efficient way of transportation uh, overland. Uh, over at Don Donetsk front, uh, we also have some uh, clarification around uh, certain things that is happening here. Um, the Ukraine Ministry of Defense is likely to cap uh, be in control of Palivka. Uh, this is given by the con consistent uh, report of shelling on Palivka. Give me a minute, I need to drink my Red Bull. And that, uh, if I'm not wrong, this is also indicated to be under uh, Ukrainian control on the Rybus map. And, uh, but um, for, for the situation at uh, Precious Tivka, uh, based on my analysis, I feel that due to the lack of shelling by the Russian forces, I think I think that uh, Peshitivka is actually under Russian control. However, this will actually differ from what Ryber actually indicated on their mapping. Uh, according to the Ryber's mapping, they put uh, Peshitivka as under Ukrainian control and so is Novo Mayoske. And I believe that they also yeah, map Shevchenko as under Russian control. So uh, let me move the border. So this is this is what uh, Ryber have. So this is what Ryber have. However, uh, base, I'm for my mapping uh, for DPS mapping, uh, Preshtivka, Shashenko, and uh, Novo Mayorsky is still under Russian control because I really didn't see any indication that uh, they the Ukrainians have captured this. So, but no. Uh, I don't want to have a group thing and just because Rival's mapping is this like that so I must follow. So we're going to have this uh, parallel universe here and uh, let's see uh, as things progress do we have uh, clearer information in, into you know, what is actually the situation around here. I uh, just want to let you know that uh, this is the this these three towns Shevchenko, Novo Mayoske and uh, Preshitivka is actually uh, indicated as Ukrainian capture by Ryber, uh, just that uh, on DPS mapping, I do not think that is the case. But however, let's indicate this. Moving on to uh, Solot K, I want to highlight that uh, this capture is verified by Ryber as under Ukrainian control, which means Ukraine indeed captured uh, Solot K. So that is very interesting. Uh, however, I also have to indicate that uh, there is a lack of Russian shelling on this position. So I I do have th have my doubts that uh, Solo K is actually uh, captured. However, given the previous report of the capture plus uh, confirmation by Ryber, uh, I, I have to you know give it to the Ukrainians for now. But I, I do note that there is this uh, weird situation where there is no uh, activities you know, around this area. Marinka continues to be in this uh, gray gray zone situation where both sides have uh, have entrenchment and positions within this town here this uh, totally destroyed town of Marinka and uh, otherwise uh, other information continues to be correct uh, there is a Sukhoi 25 shot down over by Hatie so this is the 
shot down by a uh, Sukhoi 35. So this also indicates uh, increased air to air uh, activity. Uh, previously, most of the fighters are shot down by or attack aircraft of the Ukrainians are shot down by air defense. Now we are seeing a lot more air to air hits. That means the Russians might be increasing their air superiority or air supremacy operations. Perhaps because of the low flying uh, tactics of the Ukrainian Air Force, uh, air defenses are not exactly uh, very uh, effective against a uh, low flying aircraft. So maybe that's why the Russians are now flying sorties, uh, air, de air defense sorties, uh, to you know secure the battlefront. Which is which is probably why we are seeing so many Ukrainian aircraft getting shot down by a uh, Russian air force instead of air defense. And uh, one interesting um, uh, bombardment report was this position at Koma. Um, the Ukrainians have reported bombardment at Koma. So this little this town here, this little village or town here, far away from the front line. Uh, this is actually rather far away from Belika Nova Circle. It's around thirteen. 13, 14 kilometers away from Velika Novosilka. And this is very out of um you no know, very out of this uh out of the picture, you see, you know, very out out there. I don't know how how to put it. It just doesn't gel. It makes me feel like the front line is much higher. Like the Russians have already reached Fedorivka region here, or you know at Vos Voskrensenka. No, that there's this feeling where the the Russians are actually here. You know, the kind of situation, rather, which is why we are seeing the bombardment on Koma. However, we really have no information about you know, all these locations here. That all this activity here is actually all unknown. But this bombardment and Koma, this just, just stand out like a sore thumb. So I'm not sure why is this location consistently bombarded. And why the Russians are not instead bombarding Velika Novoselka or even Belatsky or Vinepole uh, but why coma? Why? Why coma? Because it's not a full stop. So let's move on to the uh, northern side of Donetsk. Um, we have no updates other than I have and then oh, we have this. So the Ukrainian forces might be coding uh, Opitine which is actually this little town here north of the Donetsk airport. Um, the reason is because the Ukrainian Defense Ministry actually reported bombardment on this location uh, here, Opitne. And uh, Opitne was previously listed as under Russian control. So now this has become a gray zone uh, because uh, it might be Ukrainian, it might be Russians. We are not sure what is the actual situation here. And this actually invalidates the previously reported attempt to encircle Adivka, which means the Adivka um, encirclement has failed. Uh, the Donetsk People's Republic forces was previously reported on TV. I think it's on CCTV, uh, the, Rus the Chinese uh, Chinese TV station, uh, the Russian version of the Chinese TV station, saying that they are encircling Adivka. But this en this encirclement has not happened even after you no know, one two months. So the en the encirclement must have failed. So we have no idea what's the situation. In fact, I'm not even sure if this fighting at Edifka is not is any valid anymore because we really haven't heard of anything about Edifka for a long time. So in fact, uh, let's play it safe. I'm gonna delete this. There's no more fighting uh, reported. I'm gonna push back this border a little bit so that you no. Know, let's not uh, get too excited uh this you can't really get excited about something that is not happening for two months anyway so this fighting reported at Kalyamka also you know we have no idea what's the conclusion have the russians captured this not captured this uh there's no information and not to mention Kalyamka is a very common name so even if i try to search this information it will be like um just a full mess of all sorts of other inf information of Kayamkas all around other part of Ukraine. So not sure what is the actual situation. I'm gonna leave this here first so that you know not so confusing. Uh if I deleted too much so many things. Uh there's no updates regarding this area around Novo Bakmutivka nor at New York. Uh, no idea what the hell is happening around this region. So moving on to the Bakhmut front. So Bakhmut town or city is here and um this is the entire area here on the most 
eastern part of the Donetsk, uh, entire Donetsk region, war front, uh, this, the Bakhmut front. Um, the entire front line from north to south is around 60 kilometers. So, uh, just to give you a context of how big the front line is, not, not very, very big, but not small either. There is, um, there's fighting reported at uh, Velihilska power plant. The Russians actually attempted to attack the power plant, but they were actually repelled, according to the Ukraine Defense Ministry. So, so the, they, as per report, with, with offensive action, the invaders tried to establish control over the territory of the Velihilska TPP and, uh, and to improve tactical positions in the area of Dolomite, so, which is here. So they are building uh, bathtubs and you know swana, and uh, however the Ukrainian soldiers did not allow them to do this. They said this is a war zone; you cannot have too much comfort, and they rejected them to their previous position, uh, which is a uh, squatting position. So they have to squat here, and uh, they can they cannot use a toilet bowl. So no choice. Um, not there's no changes, but I have reported this fighting at. Do, uh, Magne. Uh, moving up north, there is this interesting uh, report that Klinov has been captured or Klinov has been captured and uh, this comes as a surprise to me because we have already reported the capture of Klinov for a very very long time so and this is not just the only one we actually have uh, information about Russians capturing Tripelia and Volodymyrivka and uh, that is kind of entirely weird because we have already uh, the front line reaching all the way to Soleda. So, not sure if they were pushed back there by the Ukrainians previously, uh, which I wasn't aware of, which is probably impossible given how uh, boom, bombastic, you know, so bombastic, so you know, vocal all the Ukrainian uh, supporters are, that I would have missed you know, something so big. Or the Russians are the pro-Russian accounts are actually you know feeling very itchy because there's no war progress uh, the basically the war is now at a standstill maybe because of operational pause that they have to repeat some of the previous capture just to make them feel good so they say uh, Trapelia has been captured along with, with Volodymyrivka so uh, so that is a bit of, of a weird thing similar thing for Klinov so Anyway, I just want to let you know that that happened. Uh, people were celebrating about the capture of Trapelia and Volodymyrivka. So, uh, in case you are not sure, in Russian, it's actually Vladimir, uh, Vladimirivka uh, or Vladimirovka. Vladi, uh, like the, you know, the, the, the vampire, uh, Vlad. So, uh, so, yeah, Vlad. So, anyway, moving on to here. There is no updates regarding uh, Yakolivka, Bilohorivka as well, Nahirne. Um, so not sure what's happening here, so it's very stoppy. Uh, a lot of uh, conflicting information and which I really know, I don't really like. There is a dispute of the capture of Spanet because uh, the Ukrainians reported that the Russians carry out an airstrike near disputed, which is actually Spanet. Um, and also, there was a lot of rumors about the capture of Kwaiho Rivka, um, which I didn't indicate because I actually didn't see it. Uh, maybe people are sending me misinformation. So uh, before I actually even see it, I just basically talk, uh, added this, you know, the dispute, uh, the uh, Ukraine Ministry of Defense dispute the capture of Kwaiho Rivka uh, because there is, they reported bombardment on this location. And uh, as such, and I think I also saw some tweets or something that they say that uh, the capture of Kryhorivka is actually invalidated. It's not true. And um, that spares me a lot of uh, trouble uh, because I would have reported it as captured and then I say, oh, it's invalidated again. So the misinformation campaign is now very, very heavy. And in fact, what I believe is happening is that the Russians are trying to keep to the, uh, the captured border, mostly around the... Luhansk uh, Oblast border and they are now having this operational pause and this operational pause uh, is is actually decreed by uh, Putin the Russian president uh, after he was given the report that uh, Luhansk is actually fully captured so he said give them a few days of rest 
and uh, I, th I think this is actually the few days of rest that we are actually uh, observing uh, given the lack of uh, offensive action by the Russians despite I have a lot of fighting icons here the truth is we actually do not know, you know if there is actually real active fighting uh, even at Hryhorivka is you know it's very vague because it's quite unlikely that the Russians are fighting the Ukrainians at Hryhorivka for so long and not capture it as well so uh, do take a pinch of salt and uh, there may be some kind of change in the way how I report uh, if you have noticed um, that I will actually put a lot of uh, overlapping borders just to make sure that you know we are not getting duped by you know all this misinformation that's coming out lately over the past two three weeks and uh, over at DC chance we have we have the Russian media the if Ivestia, they actually reported uh, from the glass factory around here. This is a glass factory. They reported here, you know, at the factory showing off all the all the stuff that's there. I didn't really fully watch the video because I was busy. So anyway, and it's not important because I just want to indicate that media is actually uh, at the glass factory already, which means that up to two kilometers easily, uh, this entire area is actually f uh, free of the remnants of the Ukrainian forces. Uh, the only one that I'm really curious is actually this rubber product plant. So if we can have a media report from the rubber product plant, and then we, we can very well uh, establish that there is no more random troops uh, or significant randoms of the Ukrainian forces in Lysishans. So this is uh, just something. I have reported about this uh, fully captured. Uh, if I haven't, then I will just say it again. Uh, I have assessed that Lysishans is fully captured due to the lack of major fighting reporting reported around this region so that's all for uh, the Bakhmut front um, and also I just want to highlight there's a lot of uh, stupid talk about uh, Ukrainian uh, Russian forces trying to cross at Hryhorivka or Sabrianka at the river or at below Hryhorivka and then and then uh, people are posting uh, you know, videos or photos of the crossing or whatever these are all fake. The reality is there's no reason for the Russians to need to do a risky river crossing around here when they have a perfectly nice road to go through. So, um, so, uh, and I was kind of, uh, validated because there is a, there is a, I think by Chris, the geolocation expert there, he actually posted geolocations as well as an invalidation of the reported crossing that was fake. So, so he actually invalidated the inf information. He shared it to me. I'm not sure who posted it. I cannot remember, and I don't want to open my Twitter to show you. You can go actually go to my uh, the Defense Politics Asia Twitter, and just scroll down and just take a look when I posted it. Yeah, I'm that lazy. So anyway, let's go to the Izum front. So at the Izum front, um, the there is report uh there's actually media report at the blue lakes uh blue lakes is actually all these uh, little lakes uh little ponds or lakes around this area a uh, beautiful region at Shri uh at shurovi and uh, at shurov here so the because of this report i'm able to move the front line further forward over to the very end of this uh, river area and uh so this area is now russian control uh, not very significant not very significant because the Russians do not dare to really cross over the river uh, because there is really a lot of Ukrainian troops around this region. Um, and over here at Bohoro Dashne, the Russian, uh, there is a lot of uh, Russian accounts, uh, pro Russian accounts on Telegram reported that Bohoro Dashne has been captured um, by the Luhansk People's Republic. And this is by Ridovka news and the other one by intel slava however i still put it as a question mark um the reason because something this big can't possibly miss riba and riba did not report on this so that's why i put it as a question mark because either riba or the russian defense ministry have to confirm this information uh, or else um we might repeat what we have done before we have uh, mentioned that the russians captured bohoro dashne only to find bohoro dashne to continue to be fighting over the the next two weeks three weeks and uh i don't really like that uh so so i putting it as a question mark we'll wait for further corroboration and this is definitely also disputed by the ukrainian defense ministry anyway because they reported 
the Russians shelling the position of Bogorodishnoy. So basically Bohor uh Bohorodashne. So so great area here, not sure what the hell is happening. Uh fighting continued at Dolina and Krasnopilia. There is a mix uh, MiG-29 of the Ukrainian Air Force shot down uh, over at Krasnopilia and uh, this is I think shot down by the Russians Sukhoi-35 so it seems like the Sukhoi-35 Sukhoi is actually the main air-to-air -air fighters of the Russian Air Force uh, given the number of aircraft getting shot down by the Sukhoi-35 I feel that uh, this is actually their mainstay uh, air-to-air or air superiority fighter it seems um, Otherwise, the the rest of this uh, front is very quiet. Um, there is people telling me that you know this entire forested area is actually under Russian control. The last the the thing I want to do is that actually I just want to delete away this because I don't think there's fighting going on anymore. Uh, I think the Ukrainians have given up trying to infiltrate reconnaissance troops into the forest to disturb the Russians. So that I can uh, f I feel that is happening. So I think this recon reported is also no more at Rudiv. And uh, but however, I do so. There are people are telling me to you know push the Russian border all the way here. Uh, I do not want to do that because I don't think that is real, that is reality. So I'm just gonna you know push it to you know where the reported captures are and then uh, just leave it as such. So this is probably mm, and then going along the river. So let's do this now. probably this and then uh, there's a no man's land in the middle so anyone can just walk in and get uh, walk past each other and not knowing that they actually walk past each other so uh, this is probably more accurate um, yeah so let me refresh a bit to make sure that I my changes actually uh, is saved yeah it's safe so that's good so um, no idea about the situation at a uh, price shop around this area here um, no updates here Moving on to the Kharkiv front. So at the Kharkiv front, um, there is a lot of uh, dispute by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So they reported bombardment and Bizne, uh by Iraq, Ukrainka, Dementivka, and Sosnivka. So we, so the Rus uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported all these locations to be under bo Russian bombardment. So, uh, however, is this report is alone is not indicative of uh whether the ukrainians are indeed in that location which is why it's all in question mark we'll leave it there and see how it goes however it's, the, it's interesting to you know note this there's bombardment and slatine and uh, at the mentivka however there is no bombardment on prudyanka previously prudyanka is under attack by the russians is reported by both ukraine defense ministry and a uh, pro-russian uh, Twitter account, I guess. I'm not sure it's a pro-Russian or non-pro-Russian. So, there might be a possibility that Pridyanka has been captured by the Russian forces. This is just my assessment because of where the bombardment is and based on previous information that Pridyanka was under Russian attack. And, uh, which is why the bombardment is now at Slatine. So, uh, but I'm not going to indicate it because I do not want to become a source. I just put it, this just my analysis. So, uh, we will continue to watch how this develops uh, whether the fighting end up as Latine then we will probably have some uh, corroboration that Pridyanka is indeed uh, captured by the Russians and um, so so fighting con this fighting at around uh, Sosnivka as, uh, and uh, Svitlichne uh, no more information come out from that uh, Raiba did not talk about this as, as well so uh, very soon we might have to invalidate the attack the fighting any uh, further I don't think we will have to delete it away to because to update according to the latest uh, likely situation over at this frontier so otherwise fighting continue at Vakani South Eve and uh, Pitomnik so these are the main fighting areas this mainly these two areas only so uh, otherwise uh, situation here at the Kharkiv front is pretty much uh, stagnant so this is the entire summary for the past three days so for the day of 136, 137 and 138 for the 9th to the 11th of July and uh, so uh, I'm back in Singapore you probably have uh, can identify through the difference in the sound of this uh, microphone 
and uh, hopefully this will allow me to work uh, better and uh, also you know give you more updates and uh, just nice anyway we the Russians are having operational pause it seems so not a lot have happened other than airstrike and airstrike and artillery strikes and missile strikes so um, so just nice just nice so anyway thank you for watching and uh, please press the like button uh, do subscribe if you have not subscribed and uh, I will see you in the next update